Welcome back on a Thursday, on an exciting Thursday today, obviously, for some big news ahead. Consumer Price Index coming up from the US. And uh, we are gathering here today uh, for our market moves on MT4 this morning. So welcome back and uh, welcome back today with potentially a bit more volatility moving ahead. News-wise, we didn't have anything much yesterday, apart from uh, this stuff we already talked about. Uh, we had the consumer price index basically out of China, which turned uh, into a rather deflationary uh, environment. And uh, the question is whether this is going to move similarly as well today uh, in the US. The US dollar's uh, volatility likely going to be uh, um, adjusted in a way, and uh, the volatility might increase somehow. Um, currently, the dollar's strength is uh, mainly fueled by well, some sort of a rather hawkish momentum from the Federal Reserve, some positive economic momentum and lesser uh, or kind of lower prices for the entire economic environment compared basically to the Eurozone. However, a few of these things have kind of recently changed slightly. So the hawkish momentum from the central bank is actually believed to fade further. Uh, Governor Hawker has uh, basically kind of gone from the rather hawkish uh, towards the dovish uh, um, kind of uh, field uh, and group within the central bank. So that might actually be seen as a bit of a dovish uh, motivation from the uh, central bank or the FOMC committee, which is actually a gathering rather soonish again. Yet market participants expect basically not to uh, face another rate hike in the US as uh, obviously if numbers would turn lower, you can see that here, um, we can look at all of these here. Harker here actually has a speech up and running today. So that could actually even uh, beyond the CPI figure move market momentum. Yet uh, move towards the CPI. Obviously, the July figure stated at 3.3% uh, could be uh, proven somehow interesting here moving ahead. So a slight, uh, a slight stronger um, consumer price index. And uh, if I'm being asked what my outcome or what my verdict will be, no clue, to be honest. I really don't know how we're going to see it. So we might be better off uh, placing orders in other directions, kind of uh, in terms of trading opportunities. But uh, let's get to this uh, a bit later. In the end, right now, the idea will be that uh, Americans, in particular companies from the US, uh, are not uh, supposed to invest in uh, China or uh, push markets in China with uh, AI computing, quantum computing, or uh, AI technology, uh, as well as obviously the semiconductor uh, um, area. And uh, well, the critics uh, and myself potentially included would basically say that uh, this would likely push uh, China towards the Eastern world. So we see a fragmentation globally. We see BRICS, the uh, BRICS countries growing, where actually as well countries like Saudi Arabia are pushing away from the Western world. Because uh, if we don't buy their petrol somehow in the next uh, 15 to 20 years anymore, uh, the, uh, the um, corporate goal from Saudi Arabia obviously would not be uh, uh, would not be there anymore. Obviously, if they can't uh, sell their uh, their commodities which they um, uh, which they bring up, then uh, obviously the business model might be of uh, a bit of a with a bit of a problem in relation to the near future. So definitely we see that the global world is changing, and that can be as well and is going to be um, uh, reflected in the FX market with the uh, currencies uh, moving into uh, different directions. Have a look on the uh, current uh, market momentum. The uh, euro dollar is uh, starting to approach some higher levels currently. So the sell order here, and we are still in this sell trade, uh, looking to be kind of interesting. Based on the long term chart, the monthly chart, the verdict will be here with this market environment that uh, still the 50 moving average and then obviously the pin bar pinching through that one would uh, inhibit the market from growing somehow further. The market's momentum rather bounce to the downside. And what I've uh, taken here is the 21 moving average. My uh, dear colleague Stuart has uh, added this to his charts. And actually, it's kind of a, a valuable tool to uh, uh, find some sort of market momentum when looking on how these markets are uh, proceeding here right now. So the 21 moving average actually and I know quite a few traders uh, actually on trading desks actually use those ones as well as they are more of a shorter term value, obviously, would currently inhibit the market uh, to potentially rise further. 
Something we could take into consideration later uh, when the news event is going to come out would be any sort of straddle trading opportunity. So basically um, uh, uh, expecting the market to break out into either direction to the upside, we could see the market obviously rising somehow further to the downside. We have still somehow momentum which we might expect what needs to happen technically if we see a slight as expected um, consumer price index or a stronger maybe we see a rise in the consumer price index uh, all of a sudden again this would mean that uh, the federal reserve kind of really uh, push forward again with further rate adjustments which actually in the end could push the markets to the downside in the end there could be any sort of surprises as well kicking in later on so volatility for sure should be expected and hence obviously a uh, trading should be a uh, kind of taken with caution definitely and uh, uh, urged definitely to really uh, th uh, think of position sizes as uh, the volatility might uh, shake the markets around uh, quite substantially. In any case, euro dollar looking to be currently at least uh, nicely supported, whereas the long-term outlook, as we said, uh, uh, might be back up to the downside uh, at some point. The pound, on the other hand, is actually trading weaker. That's the interesting part here. So selling-wise, uh, we might see further opportunities here and again the markets can change uh, big time until the news event kicks in that's still uh, quite a few hours uh, uh, from now um 2 30 p.m in the afternoon so um based on the current observation that uh or those would be levels which could be interesting here uh, to take into consideration for uh, potential trading opportunities however again 21 moving average here uh, kicking in from above as a bit of a resistance area yet the market has actually rather fallen so as a sell stop the pound a US dollar currency pair might be more fruitful because the market obviously after the recent support right so we've seen a couple of days ago last week the market fell it was rising again pushing back to the upside actually again all the way up towards the next previous uh, support level now turning it into a, a resistance area that's the support area here that's now turning into resistance area right now and basically yesterday the market attempted to run back towards uh, testing the new high points but uh, failed in the end and signaling some weaker market momentum and what we can observe for the day right now is that the current candlestick uh, is trying or has tried to push somehow higher but seemingly failed so far in doing that and hence obviously might be bound rather to the downside as at least uh, this chart suggests I want to delete the trend lines here but uh, based on the daily chart uh, a sell stop could be interesting say right on top of the psychological 127 127 or 5 area or with a bit of a security cushion just below the 127 area that's actually those are the levels which uh, traders normally look out and watch out for uh, if they were keen to kind of uh, uh, celebrate the break of a certain psychological number right so 127 126 15 128 and so forth so those are the levels basically to take into consideration when markets would move or expected to move into um, one direction and then obviously the long-term chart here and uh, let me now delete the trend lines which we've drawn in uh, just now the long-term chart would now indicate as well that this is uh, a currently an interesting opportunity here as uh, the 126.60 level basically the low from recent last july's pin bar candle if they are being broken could indicate uh, for the downward pressure and hence obviously downward motivation might uh, extend uh, the way to the downside here based on the 50 moving average the uh, pin bar candle the recent momentum to the downside and obviously the further pressure and this well so-called triangle formation level which could add uh, a spice here to this market so the long-term outlook and uh, the verdict might be a dollar strength us dollar strength potentially being expected here but we need to get uh, the fundamental factors and information in line with the current market moves they are not pretty much uh, clear at the moment as one might say uh, myself included that uh, the consumer price index might turn slightly weaker 
weaker and uh, then some sort of rather dovish motivation for the US, for the Federal Reserve uh, acting towards then obviously not uh, not uh, adjusting interest rates uh, somehow further. So that's the general uh, rule of thumb here at the moment, what these markets are uh, concerned. Let's have a look on our risk uh, on risk off currencies and we can observe the Australian against the US dollar currently uh, starting to rise off this uh, support level. That's uh, nothing new here. We talked about it earlier this week, Monday, Tuesday, the push lower, uh, yesterday sideways, and today so far the market has started to rise a little bit. Uh, that reflects some potential positive moves as well in the S&P 500. Et voila, that's exactly what's happening. Currently the sell stop order, oh no, sorry, that's a sell trade. The sell trade is still uh, in the market, so we are still in this position with the overall stop loss all the way up the upside as in general the weekly chart, and that's exactly why I'm kind of keen to watch for this news event today. We might see quite a bit of drop potentially at least uh, in this market which could push the uh, uh, S&P 500 further to the downside. We are already trading on Thursday so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday nothing much in terms of a movement has happened. However last week we saw the big drop what we quite often see is after a huge volatile week then we have another week where the market doesn't do anything much and potentially we just don't see anything this week maybe it's a non-event later on can be as well and then next week we see a sudden drop again which uh, would say let's have a look coincide with what we see yeah something like this right we had like one two three weeks here this might not be seen as a very volatile session because the market moved up slightly but before it went to the upside the market initially went all the way down to then push all the way back to the upside and close quite bullish the week after was just nothing much that was a week with smaller momentum smaller volatility whereas the third week comparing these three candlesticks here boom went all the way to the upside indicating another a strong hawkish bullish momentum similar something uh, similarly something can be seen here a huge push to the downside some sideways price action sideways price action and then the market thereafter was uh, off to the races again in the opposite direction that said at the moment maybe markets are still digesting what comes next what is really going to be the outcome of the cpi figures is the fed really kind of turning more dovish how is the economic implications going to move and then hence obviously everything in one package i believe we still have a few figures from the earnings season coming out today if i'm not wrong i need to double check on that one so that means as well the s p 500 uh, uh, companies obviously included might kind of really uh, be shaken up uh, a little bit uh, with some momentum the nasdaq 100 companies obviously is kind of moving slightly more bearish and uh, as we expected yesterday downside momentum happening our trade is uh, still on going so exactly there we go we have how we expected the markets which doesn't happen to be the case always but um, we had this uh, pin bar candle we had this intra candle two weeks ago last week basically the bearish Push and it seems that also this week, similarly, and uh, guys, by the way, that's mostly the case in all indices globally, apart from certain economic uh, um, uh, um, regions potentially, that if one index moves to the upside, most of them tend to follow, yet with slightly a different uh, volatility. And in this case here, the NASDAQ has been rather a bit bearish and looking at it from this perspective. And we can see the Nasdaq rather down. We can look at the um, Dow Jones, which is uh, on the weekly chart, not too much uh, to, uh, moving to the downside. The S&P as well, not too much also. Where else uh, the um, German DAX is kind of rather following what the Dow Jones is doing, not so much of a directional momentum, whereas the S&P 500 is rather slightly bearish and then followed obviously with the most uh, negatively implicated uh, Nasdaq for now. Um, um, economic momentum and uh, obviously the war in the Ukraine plus other factors simply are driving the oil market. So oil has broken uh, to the upside. There was a nice breakout happening um, here, a, a resistance area basically, and the market's falling price momentum has uh, led to this market running all the way towards higher levels. So it looks to be quite uh, positive here moving forward. Whether oil is moving much higher is the big question. And it looks like, to be honest, as we see the black color, the resistance resistance line here has been broken since uh, since uh, yesterday's trading so on a weekly basis the market is already up and running off to the races we might call it and the question is uh, whether this is a sustainable move or not we would need to wait for the end of the week to happen obviously the US dollar 
should it turn much stronger, could pull the oil market slightly back to the downside. But it seems like the implications from the uh, uh, Russian invasion or yet the counterattack, the seemingly attack on uh, these oil tankers in the Black Sea uh, by the Ukraine, obviously, um, uh, with the help of the Americans, seemingly adds to uh, adds fuel uh, uh, to the fire uh, in the end uh, uh, by, by real meaning. And that obviously kind of harms uh, prices of some sort, obviously 15 to 20 percent of the Russian oil is being exported through the Black Sea. Insurance uh, uh, policies, insurance contracts will uh, turn pricier for Russian ships, that's for sure, as well as obviously cargo and vessels itself will obviously kind of uh, uh, ask uh, and uh, 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 yeah, ask for higher pay. If you're looking at the monthly chart, the breakout clearly happening. So uh, uh, that's a great fruitful trading strategy as well, trading breakouts, so waiting for the market to break uh, beyond a certain range comparing a previous time frame here. In this case, we are on the monthly chart. We've seen last month the market went to the upside. Earlier this month, we saw a bit of a retracement and now maybe off to higher price levels, looking to be quite a, a positive trend here which might be due to continue as well in regards to stronger oil prices. And uh, that's most of the stuff we have to talk about. A couple of words uh, in regards to the dollar against the Japanese yen. Um, that's kind of uh, starting to perform better, to be honest. So that looks uh, kind of quite good as well. Whether this is going to be an interesting trading opportunity later uh, can be the question. Well, if we see uh, some sort of uh, momentum in the US dollar, this could certainly help if we see a slightly stronger dollar, this could kind of be uh, an emphasized momentum of this market, because the bottom line is that the Japanese yen seems to be uh, quite weak. And that's the key factor here in this market, pound Japanese yen looking to break out. We have our buy stop order in the market and we have the euro against the Japanese yen. And by the way, uh, this order has been triggered at the moment, not too much uh, to be expected, but after again, this this sideways price action more or less uh, if we're looking at these uh, recent uh, uh, candles and the recent uh, support resistance areas there is potentially more momentum to be expected as we said we had a strong week we had a retracement and um, basically it's not that the market didn't go anywhere but um, after this retracement and slash sideways pattern here this month here in august could kind of really start to emphasize the moves again back to the upside and uh, what goes down must come up and what comes up must go down at some point at least that's at least how we can observe uh, when looking at uh, equities like apple uh, in part as well microsoft for example but uh, here with uh, the euro against the japanese yen uh, some further potential potentially being expected next level 162 and subsequently the 160 66 could be a fruitful a trading operation here looking at the market at least to rise somehow um, further guys that's my take so far for the time being there's no questions from you guys the usual gang plus a few new faces have been uh, um, kicked in here Arne is you're back as well great to see you Gerhard uh, as well some Germans as well in the group Michael Nihao Ma welcome back as well from Malaysia so guys uh, please just uh, tune in later on my dear colleague Marius and myself we're going to trade live the CPI figures uh, I'm looking forward so we'll examine potential breakout trades uh, which is uh, actually one of the fruitful trading strategies breakouts to the up and to the downside and my colleague Marios he's going to look for retracement so if we see certain levels being tested over and over again we might get uh, an insightful uh, trading opportunities here throughout the trading day that's it from my side so far see you guys later take care everyone and bye bye